Welcome. My name is Susan Naruki. I'm a professor in the Department of Music here at UC San Diego, and I'm the faculty director of Arts and Community Engagement, which is sponsoring this afternoon's program. We are an initiative of the Dean's Office of the Division of Arts and Humanities. Arts and Community Engagement seeks to strengthen and animate the vibrant atmosphere of the arts at UC San Diego. Through the visionary leadership of our Chancellor Pradeep Khoslaw and Executive Vice Chancellor Elizabeth Simmons, our campus is undergoing a fundamental transformation. One in which I'm happy to say includes re-envisioning the role of the arts and the humanities. In many ways, our arts departments can be described as a hidden gem of our campus. And through the support of our current administration, our already strong, vibrant campus arts departments are being strengthened, becoming increasingly visible in the public landscape of our campus, and playing an important role in shaping what's to come. This is an absolutely exceptional opportunity for us, and we are so grateful. Today we're gathered in a space that's contributed to the leading edge of artistic practice for five decades. As our campus is growing and changing, we believe that it's necessary to take this opportunity to envision the future of this space. And that's what brings us all here today for this event. We're honored to have five directors of renowned university art galleries with us today. Each of our distinguished panelists has worked with their home institution to fulfill the mandate of a vibrant university art gallery, promoting artistic practice, engaging with faculty and students, as well as the greater community. I'm so grateful that you're all here, and without further ado, please welcome our first speaker, Elizabeth Chodas. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Susan, and thank you, Amy, for having me out here, and for everyone who made today possible, including the dean and vice chancellor. It's such a pleasure to be here with everyone um, as you're envisioning your future for your gallery. So I'm here from Carnegie Mellon from the Miller Institute for Contemporary Art. Our mission is to provide transformative experiences with contemporary art through exhibitions, conversations, and exchange in free and open public space, um, and to advance society by connecting CMU students and community, the city of Pittsburgh, and national and international art world to groundbreaking contemporary art and ideas. So thinking about um, the CMU community and the students and the faculty there, CMU is, I think, much like UCSD in that um, we are really a center for technology and the development of new technologies and artificial intelligences. So thinking about how the contemporary arts align with that and how we can bring those students at this really transformative and formative moment in their lives as they're sort of shaping who they are as an undergraduate, realizing the ways in which contemporary art can play into how they see the understand the world and continue to understand the world as they mature and leave and leave campus. We do this School through programs or exhibitions that highlight high caliber um, contemporary artists who work college and then with an amplified unit of universities research and creative interests and then the through our public programs that generate engagement with these exhibitions and, and other topical for issues for wide ranging cross disciplinary dialogue. Um, uh, and in exchange of both online and in person. So just to give you a sense of how we're structured. Um, a lot of our support comes from the college, and then I also do a lot of fundraising uh, to support what we do. We also have four dedicated staff, uh, so full-time staff including the director and myself. We have a business manager, and we're supported by the advancement and marketing offices. So I'm always working closely with the fundraising department within the college and in Central, um, and with marketing as well. So just to give you a sense of our scope and scale. So this is just an example of an exhibition that uh, I curated in the fall of 2018 called 
paradox of body in the age of AI. So drawing on the sort of um, research interests of the university, this exhibition really explored the primacy of the human body in this moment. Um, so it's, these technologists around me are imagining the potentials of merging humans with AI. These artists are considering the body's um, elusive and underestimated power. So we had 11 artists um, in this exhibition um, who are from all over the world, um, and it touched on issues yeah, particularly relevant to CMU. Um, this one particular exhibition, we had 3,000 3, visitors coming through um, and was uh, widely, um, was written about widely and reviewed in the New York Times. So I just point that out as a way to sort of say, like, we really made this shift to connect to all these, you know, to really just like hit on every note with this one exhibition and we were able to raise the visibility and raise the profile of our programming with this approach. Uh, in addition to the Miller ICA hosted a symposium, Biases and Frames in Art and AI, and it was an all-female panel, which maybe isn't, in, at CMU it was a very big deal to have an all-female panel on the topic of AI, and it was, we sort of did it on purpose. Um, and, <laughs> and so that was a cross-disciplinary conversation where we had artists, we had computer scientists, we had researchers, um, we had 130 people there, and then we were live streaming it. So we also just think of ourselves as an institute, not just within the four walls or within the physical space of the gallery, but how can we facilitate and generate programs throughout the city and outside the city as well. Hi, thank you so much for coming. I'm delighted to be here and talking to my distinguished colleagues. I'm at the MIT List Visual Arts Center, so we are the Contemporary Art Museum at MIT. And perhaps somewhat surprisingly, um, we are not, we don't have a state admission to be uh, devoted to art and technology. The history of the arts at MIT is quite interesting. It was written into the mission of the university with its inception. And there was um, a, under the then president, kind of an effort to increase MIT's involvement in the arts with their state admission to humanize the sciences. We are a center, which means we are an, an, like a completely autonomous administrative entity at MIT. We're like a lab. So we are not formally affiliated with the visual arts program. We're not um, with the studio program. We're not formally affiliated with art history. We sort of operate administratively autonomously, um, which I think is both a huge advantage and then also presents some challenges for us. But I think we kind of have a dual mission in being an international contemporary art space and a university museum that we're neither of which we want to lose, but we sort of have a slightly higher hurdle to clear in bringing the two together sometimes. And we've been doing that mostly through public programming and working very, very closely with faculty across a range of different disciplines, with one of the main goals being that our exhibitions really become elements of the curriculum that are studied and used in coursework. Which is one thing I will say about our exhibitions with 5,000 square feet. All of our, the group exhibitions, even though some of them have been topical and influential, really are quite small. We don't have that much space. It has to be sort of a very focused argument that we're making. And also our, our individual artist shows are basically project exhibitions. We don't really have the space to do a full-on survey. So I think that has also contributed to the kind of shows that we do. And um, I mean, you know, it's sort of, a chicken and the egg, this is how the, the list was started, but then this is also the kind of position that we occupy, I think, in the U.S. museum landscape. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me to come and speak today. I'm uh, thrilled and I've uh, followed the University Art Gallery for many years. So I'm um, the gallery director and professor of museum studies at San Diego Mesa College. And um, our mission is a little bit different than some of the other art galleries because besides exhibiting the work of emerging and established artists, we are also a laboratory for our museum studies uh, courses for our students to learn all the different skills that are necessary to present their work professionally and also get their feet wet in uh, curatorial projects and marketing and other aspects. So that was the model uh, for our um, gallery. 
and I was hired uh, to serve both as the director and curator of the gallery space, but also the professor of the in charge of the museum studies program. So this is our new facility. Thanks to all of our San Diego taxpayers, we got a bond measure, and the last of the monies were uh, given for a fine arts um, building. And so $16 million was spent in this four-story building. It's about 2,200 square feet. And, um, and we also have a great workroom that we utilize to teach our classes. And we have uh, a student gallery in the second floor that is also utilized for student work, but also for uh, other types of projects. So this uh, space that we got is really uh, fabulous. One of the things that I told them, I want to be visible. It's very important for a gallery to be visible. So I said, wayfinding is key. So if you can make sure that people find us, that would be great. So they did six foot letters, you know, right by the parking lot. Uh, and that was another obstacle for people to come into an island, which is a college or a university. People have to navigate. And that's also visibility is key to have people come to visit. So, so I had them place us on the first floor right by the parking lot. So people just park, see the art gallery sign, and they come right in. So it's really um, a great space uh, to showcase art and to bring people. We do about seven exhibitions per year, and we feature established and emerging artists, mostly regional artists because we have a very small budget, but also because I think there are few spaces for contemporary art in San Diego. So we serve that purpose in the community, that there's a lot of talent, there's a lot of great work being done here. And I also reach out beyond San Diego to Tijuana, because I also see my role as kind of binational. I'm, I'm also from Mexico, so I have all of those connections. So I bring a lot of artists also from Tijuana to show in our space. Uh, we also have a group exhibition that's done by our museum studies class, and also that exhibit accepts the work of students. So we've had students from UCSD, from Cal State San Marcos, from Southwestern College, are uh, being incorporated into these exhibits and sharing the space with more established artists. We have a faculty exhibition every couple of years, and we also have collaborations with our War World Cultures collection. And besides having the exhibitions, we have a lot of engagement with the college and the community at large. We have uh, artist lectures, we have panels of arts professionals uh, every year, we have social practice projects, and we also do the Dia de los Muertos, which is my favorite, with the, with the Art Chicano Studies Department. We have a full-time gallery assistant, which is invaluable. I'm half-time, release time for the gallery, and then I do all the rest of the gallery stuff. Uh, and, and the um, teaching the museum studies classes. We have our museum studies students as assistants, we have work study students, and we have two part-time paid assistants. But we do get a lot of support from the college. You know, we do get all of our staffing, you know, paid uh, by our college. We get a lot of support for our events. We also do a lot of collaboration with the other departments on campus. And when I program the gallery, I try to tap into topics that will attract people in the sciences, people in black studies, people in Chicano studies. And that really activates the space, and it means that it's not just for the fine arts students, but it reaches out beyond. And I just wanted to say that there's a lot of great galleries here locally that are university and college galleries. That's my list. And that we just are few of the spaces here uh, in the city that play an important part in the cultural landscape. Um, so that's it. Thank you. OK, Van PFA, Berkeley Art Museum and Pacific Film Archive. Uh, our mission to inspire the imagination, ignite critical dialogue, and activate community engagement through art, film, and other forms of creative expression. We are the oldest still operating art museum on the West Coast. And when I became the director, I was looking back at some archival papers uh, that I found in the closet. And I found some uh, letters from Clark Kerr, the then chancellor. And it turned out that the reason why he supported the funding of this enormous uh, building was that he had gotten feedback that 
Swiss physicists were turning down job offers at UC Berkeley because they thought it was like some backward, cultureless place. And he, uh, you know, and he realized he needed to establish a great art museum in order to get the physicists. So the university very generously gave us this site. Uh, it was the printing plant of UC Berkeley, which is an extraordinary place. Um, and I will say that I think location is really, really critical. And it's incredible that they built a factory in the heart of downtown Berkeley, 20,000 square foot factory, opposite the main entrance to the campus. We wanted a building that was very transparent and welcoming. You can look through and see the art. Uh, this uh, cafe upstairs is a kind of signature element. And then we also have a 30 foot wide outdoor screen uh, that has become a major public amenity. Uh, it faces onto the street and the city's been very good at sharing the street with us and we'll close it off when we ask. So here you see uh, the, uh, the Trump-Clinton debate. We did all three debates and had thousands of people. We also showed other things, the Women's World Cup uh, finals we showed on the screen. So it's really a, just a fantastic thing, and it costs nothing. All we do is push a button and you know anything that's out there in the airwaves we can present to the public. Some of the exhibitions are curated by us, some are curated by guest curators, and some are curated by students. Uh, this is a show curated by a graduate uh, student, actually a postdoc. During that year, she did what we think may have been the first museum exhibition in the United States of contemporary Tibetan art. Another exhibition curated by students. Uh, this is part of a series we do called Cal Conversations, which is a show every year that is done in collaboration with a faculty member and a seminar. So the seminar happens in the fall, and the seminar leads to the development of an exhibition which opens in the spring. We try uh, to focus not only on art history classes, but uh, other departments. We've done work with uh, uh, Chinese language, rhetoric, um, we're doing a project now with the geography department. This exhibition is called About Things Loved, Blackness and Belonging. It was a grad and undergraduate seminar, and they looked into the collection of African-American artists, African diasporic artists, not only from our collection, but also the Hearst Museum of Anthropology. I think this exhibition was really exemplary in a lot of ways of the possibilities that exist for a museum in an academic context. Another way that we relate with the uh, curricular and academic part of the campus is through a program called Berkeley Connect, which is a campus-wide program that encourages freshmen and first-year transfers in many different disciplines to go out into the campus and community and do sort of learning out in the, in the world, not and the sort of way to get them out of the classroom. So one of the places they often go is the museum, because we're really set up to receive groups of people like that. So this is students from chemistry, from mathematics, from uh, you know, all the different departments across the campus. 40% of the students at UC Berkeley are first in their family to go to college. So there's a cultural hurdle to just coming in the front door for the first time. They're not used to going to museums, and you know, they don't know. But that first week on campus, before they formed any habits, before they don't even know that the museum is a museum, we get them in the door. But to get the students into that door is the biggest hurdle, but to get them in the first time. After that, they know where we are, they know it's not dangerous, they know it's nice and, you know, and there's something interesting in there, and they'll come back. Um, we do many, uh, things also with camp various campus units. One of the important things that we have on campus is something called the Arts and Design Initiative. And the Arts and Design Initiative is a kind of a collective of different arts-oriented departments on campus. This year is a collaboration with Berkeley Center for New Media, Arts and Technology Colloquium, the School of Journalism, and uh, College of Indigenous Studies. We have a program called Black Life, which is a wonderful program looking at the culture kind of more the local culture of the uh, uh, African-American community and the African diaspora. And it's very broad, so music, dance, film, uh, literature, workshops also. And this is guest programmed by uh, people from the community. Uh, we have an art lab, which is a drop-in all-ages art-making space. So anybody who comes to the museum can make art. They're free materials. You can do whatever you want. Uh, most of it is uh, open-ended, uh, not guided, but occasionally we will do workshops like 
This one, which was uh, called Unity Day, to create space and visibility for queer and trans skaters uh, and offer community print resources. And I'll just give a few statistics to leave you with. About 150,000 visitors a year, of which 25,000 are students. As I mentioned, 500 films, 21 exhibitions, 50 performances. We employ about 300 work-study students uh, and have about 65 staff members. So um, I'll answer more questions later. Thank you. Hi, thank you for being here. Thank you, Amy, for inviting me. I'm truly honored to be on a panel with some institutions that I absolutely admire. The UAG at UC Irvine is housed within the Art Department in the Claire Trevor School of the Arts, which is shared with dance, music, and drama. At the UAG, we display a mixture of professional and student exhibitions within our three spaces, uh, located in separate buildings, but all within walking distance from one another. Last year, the interior of the UAG was renovated for the first time uh, since its inception, um, including new floors, new lights, resurfacing its walls, amongst other outdated details, electrical matters, and whatnot. Um, the renovation was made possible by the Chancellor, inspired by the newly acquired art collection of Orange County developer Gerald Buck. And our newest space was built in 2011, Contemporary Art Center Gallery. It also houses my office, the UAG archive. There's multiple levels above, which are administrative offices, but also um, the artist's studios are on the fourth floor. So in my role as the associate director and curator, I actively direct and manage all matters relating to the galleries, included but not limited to exhibition installation, design, creation, writing and research, administration and budget, public programming, publications, facilities management, operations, training and workshops, just to name a few things. The University Art Gallery at UC Irvine has a long history with the Department of Art and thus is parallel. Since its inception in the late 1960s, the gallery has almost always been directed by faculty. As such, it has served as a laboratory that presents the creative research of our students and faculty to the public rather than functioning as a publicly managed museum. The vision of directors and guest curators were always in line with the core interests of the faculty, thus the gallery functioned as an ambitious counterpart to the curriculum. The last thing, this is just an image from one of our um, undergraduate uh, uh, exhibitions. I want to talk a little bit about the programming um, since students are our main uh, audience. One of our main contributions is the Visiting Artist Lecture Series, so we contribute a lot of artists. If, whenever we do an exhibition, we invite that artist to come in and um, do a lecture and do studio visits. Um, and uh, I'm gonna, because I'm running out of time, I'm gonna end on this image. In case you have a chance to come down to the galleries, this is what's currently on view. It was all specifically made just for UCI. Um, it's really an amazing legacy, and also we're honored that we have this show. So I hope that you can come by and check it out. We have a few questions we're going to ask to start the conversation, and then we'll open it up for a Q&A from people in the audience. What is the broader role of a university art gallery or museum in the U.S. today, both in terms of its functional operation and its cultural and artistic mission, and how are they different from private museums or galleries? Yeah, I think of us really producing knowledge that is not so dissimilar from what other um, research labs, institutions are doing. And I also think that we occupy an incredibly important role in that we're free to the public. We, don't, we have virtually zero earned income, and I think that gives us a lot of freedom to do the kinds of shows that freestanding um, museums and commercial galleries simply can't do. I do think the distinction between university and college galleries and uh, general museums is the relationship to the students, um, which is kind of the most essential thing that university galleries and museums have. And that is where there is, I think, untapped potential um, because I think that uh, academia, broadly speaking, has yet to really embrace in its heart the idea that art matters to education and is there to support all the students and to help them learn and be better yeah, students, but more effective learners. So I think if it, you know, university administrations could come around to that idea, uh, museums and galleries on campuses would go from being ancillary accoutrements to becoming foundational parts of campus life. What forms and levels of support does your university provide and what is expected of you in return? 
How large a role do you play in fundraising and what types of communities support your museum or gallery? Our budget is about $11 million a year, of which about 10 to 15 percent comes from the university. Another 10 to 15 percent comes from endowment payouts, so we're raising about 70 percent of that $11 million annually, from mostly from individual donors. Uh, relatively small amount from foundations uh, and nothing from corporations. So uh, our institution is really run thanks to the generosity of individual donors in our community. Um, mostly very local, although we do have some national and international people who are maybe alums or something, uh, not necessarily. I'd, I'd say among our major donors, maybe half are alums, but we do have a broad uh, connection to the wider community. Only 10% of our audience is UC Berkeley students, faculty, and staff, so 90% of our audience is the broader community. Um, and I think that embeddedness in the community definitely helps with fundraising. The, uh, we have our own development department. Um, I do probably 40% of my job is fundraising, and uh, we have you know, membership people, senior gift officers, grant writers. We've got a lot of people working to raise that seven to eight million dollars a year that we have to get with some help from the central campus. So we work in collaboration with the central campus to get that money. And even the chancellor herself will help us for a, a major ask and, and it's quite collaborative. I don't fundraise. Uh, we are given a budget from the university and that is what we work within. Um, on occasion, we will uh, you know, get a special grant for a special exhibition. We have a lot of support in, from our college in terms of staffing, of my position and my assistant, full-time assistant, and we do have a lot of support for other types of things like events. Um, I mean, I feel we're really valued in our college that what we do for our students is really visible and, and the role that we play in the local arts commu community is also visible because of the people who come into the space to see the, the work. We have to raise about $600,000 of a um, 2.3 million budget overall, which is, so we get 75% of our budget from um, MIT or various endowments we have. The number of uh, money that we fundraise that has dramatically increased um, since our current director, Paul Ha, has been on board and, the, and then me, that used to be much more modest, mostly through grants. Um, we have really increased outreach to um, individual donors, so, so there has been, I, I don't know what their percentage is, but that number has grown significantly. Um, and we have been um, working on establishing a pretty um, ambitious patron program and pe cultivating people to give it a higher level. Um, those are um, a mix, kind of half and half of people. Some people come, are MIT alums with an interest in art, and then we also have people who are simply contemporary arts patrons, Boston arts patrons, and are interested in what we're doing. Also, um, the fundraising is done um, primarily by our director, associate director, and also by myself. All of our operational funds, so that includes all the staff um, and any sort of just sort of day-to-day -day operation funds comes from the college. And then I raise money for all of our um, programs. So anything that, all the exhibitions, all of the lectures and things like that, I raise from individuals, uh, foundations. When I was hired, again, it was sort of after this period of a director, it was a directorless moment for the Miller. Um, there was a real mandate to sort of raise the stakes and visibility. Um, and part and parcel to that was drawing in new resources to the university. Um, yeah, so I think one of the things that I think is really helpful in having the university in general understand um, our contributions not only to the sort of pedagogy of the university and to the life of the students, but also in terms of just our, our concrete value to the university is that many um, of their donors have interest in the arts. You know, even if you may be an engineering or computer science graduate, you are a whole person and lots of people <laughs> have our collections. Um, and so when they see a rigorous, exciting, well-funded program coming out of the University for Contemporary Arts, uh, those donors tend to, th that strengthens their connection um, to the u university and it provides another opportunity that, for them to partner um, in a meaningful way 
to help you know, realize ambitious projects. How does your gallery or museum relate to or coordinate with other arts-related entities on campus, if, if there are any? A couple of years ago, some of the um, department you know, professors chair got together and we formalized a relationship between all of the fine and performing arts um, departments so that we have theater, music, dance, um, fine art, and now we even added culinary art and we had fashion too. So that we can establish connections with others on campus, but by having a formal structure of individuals who are invested, we, and we meet once a month to kind of plan things throughout the year that will reach beyond you know, our own individual departments, but we can also take advantage of the resources that each one of our departments has. So we can share those resources too. And, and what we've also started is how most of us are, the art, you know, are in the arts, uh, how can we reach beyond the arts and connect to other disciplines in our college? So we started a series uh, devoted to different topics. So for example, this semester we had the sciences and the arts. We had the left meets right uh, series of um, lectures that were bringing people in music that use science. I brought in an artist that illustrates for NASA, but is also a conceptual artist. So, so these are ways that we're thinking as this performing on fine arts committee, reaching beyond our, um, our own disciplines and using our resources. Uh, at Berkeley, there was an effort that began about four years ago to create a little bit more coordination, the creation of something called the Arts and Design Initiative. In the past, uh, the Berkeley Center for New Media, the Arts and Technology Colloquium, uh, us, Art Practice, all had separate lecture series all over campus, completely uncoordinated. And what the Arts and Design Initiative did is it curated highlights from each of those series into a kind of a master series which happens at the museum and which is much more accessible to the public. Uh, you know, it's all free. Now it gets a lot of promotion and that uh, filters back into the various units because people come and they learn about the Arts and Technology Colloquium or something like that. So just that one thing I think has been very powerful. They also sponsored something called the Arts Pass, which is an app that gives students information about arts activities across campus and discounted admissions. So those kind of systemic uh, linkages, I think, are really good to do. If you could start from the ground up to create an ideal university art gallery or museum, what staffing structure would you suggest? Should the director be a faculty member, a staff member, or a dual appointment? And what other structures more gen generally would you suggest as well? I do think that particularly, well, at any college or university museum, the director should be at the table with the academic leadership. If, if the institution takes seriously the role of the arts in education across disciplines, the director has to know what's going on, has to be part of those conversations. I am the model that is the faculty and gallery director, and I see a lot of benefits in terms of as, as you mentioned, like having connections to the other faculty it facilitates that, the fact that I'm on board and I also, the, the museum studies program and how it fits to our gallery as our laboratory, it just makes sense for it to have somebody who can do both because it works pretty seamlessly to have the students work with me uh, in planning the exhibitions and you know, learning from the artists. So I, I think that it works great for us. I think there's two points to this. If you're imagining a future for the space, is one to create a mandate and to create a vision with a committee, but also to make that flexible and open enough so it's attractive to a new director who's going to come in and to be responsive to that director. Because if you want someone with a real vision and a real, you know, to take something to the next level, um, that person's going to have ideas about <laughs> how things should be structured. And so there should be an openness to that, I think. Um, I just wanted to mention um, the amazing history of, of the gallery here. A lot of amazing projects happened here. I think you have a history already, which is incredible, and then to have you know a blank slate now and uh, freedom to create a new program and uh, to create a new vision behind that, but with the history that you already have backing it, um, it seems like the, the potential is um, it's, it's completely open, which is very exciting.